Valentine's is a great day for friendship, as silly as that might seem. I think all the hype, sorry, all the hype about the lovey-dovey romantic stuff is a little bit overkill. I think most of our holidays get to be overkilled, like Christmas, maybe even New Year's. St. Patty's Day. Don't touch my Halloween, though. <laughs> but I absolutely wanted to make this video to spend time with you, my friends. And I realized I had the perfect dress to wear. It's red. I don't wear it very often. It's made of this awesome velvet. And the funny thing is, the last time I wore this, <coughs> I wore it to a local spiritual festival, we'll call it, and it still smells like that festival. All of the incense and everything. So it makes me so happy. <laughs> but anyways, shift around. Before any of you drift off to sleep, which I certainly hope you do, I thought I should read out my Valentine's Day cards for everyone. So, on the very first one, we have Mishik ASMR, who is also a fellow artist. Let's see if we can get the stick without any loud squeaky noises. There we go. After I've read out all the valentines, I have some nice noise triggers, and I thought I would read out a list of random facts about Valentine's Day. Now, some of these valentines are for fellow artists, and you will find a link to their channel below. If you haven't checked them out, you should certainly check them out because they have wonderful videos. I've been spending a fair amount of my time with them lately with their videos. <laughs> um, from sleep to work, because I can listen while I'm working, I just can't watch. I've been trying to spend as much time as I can with them so that we help their numbers grow. All right, so for Miss Chic, we have this lovely Valentine. If it will focus. Oh, of course, we've got to deal with a glare. <laughs> yes, I did pick up My Little Pony Valentines. It's one of my favorite animated shows. Um, sadly, I have not actually watched the movie yet. There was a big mix-up. I was supposed to go with some friends and their young daughter who loves My Little Pony. But there was a big mix-up and I didn't get to go. So I've been waiting. I'll probably watch it on my own and then I'll go watch it with her because I didn't get to. So this one, sorry I started peeling the heart already. This one is for Sleepy Chipmunk ASMR. aren't really that sticky or big enough to make sticker noises. And that makes me sad. Alright, so who do we have on this one for Sleepy Chipmunk? Princess Luna and Celestia. This one was a request made by a friend on my Instagram, like, sorry, um, one of my followers requested her friend's name. So this is for Ebony underscore the God. Dare to discover. 
this one is for Pandy. Let me focus on its own. Don't even know if you can see it. There we go. <clears throat> Let's see what Valentine's Day card Pandy got. And also, I apologize if I do mispronounce anyone's names. Not my intention. <laughs> All right. Pandy got Pinkie Pie, who just looks so absolutely joyous in this picture. I mean, when doesn't she, but... Well, actually, Pinkie Pie does get frustrated, so. <laughs> She's quite comical. This one is for another artist. Mood Candy ASMR. Love the name. Thought I was being original with Brebop. <laughs> Brebop is actually a bit of a nickname that I have from my best friend. And I thought that. Bop, bop, bop. Pop, pop, pop. was a good noise. Alright, so for mood candy, if you can get to focus here, it's upside down. No, it's not. <laughs> it is hard to see from behind a big giant ring light. Alright. <laughs> so that one is chase your dreams, which I think is very appropriate for anyone, but especially for my fellow artists. Speaking of, we have another one here. This is for Nyla Vox ASMR. And like I said, I might be mispronouncing that. It's sped, spelled <laughs> N-Y-L-A underscore V-O. Oh, again, chase your dreams. <laughs> yeah, I just saw these Valentines at the dollar store and I thought, that's perfect. I love them so much. So this is another artist. This is Soft Heart ASMR. And I should actually clarify, when I mean another artist, I'm talking about YouTube, because I do have artists. There are ASMR artists on Instagram who haven't delved into the YouTube world. So I apologize. We're all making wonderful videos here, where, no matter what our platform is. So Soft Heart ASMR is another YouTuber. And I thought, what's more appropriate than my favorite Fluttershy for her? And she has a soft heart. <laughs> and this one is for Alan Olaf Nightingale. Again, another YouTuber and Instagram. So I will have the links down below. Definitely the YouTubes. Um, See if I can grab the Instagram handles for you as well. Of course, now we're getting some sticky noises. So, Alan, I figured Rainbow Dash would be great. <laughs> so much adventure. And we have one more. And this one for everyone else. Just because I didn't know your name for this card doesn't mean you're not important to me. My microphone's right over here, so. There we go. <laughs> oh, it's stuck to my finger. <laughs> so, for everyone else. just wanted to give everyone a little valentine because you're all important to me. You've all kept me going, so 
I'm really grateful and I'm really happy. I'm really happy to spend this time with you. away now. So, sorry. I found this cute little sequin mermaid pillow with gold and red. It's actually at the dollar store. And it's actually pretty decent quality. I mean, the mermaid pillow that I had ordered online cost a heck of a lot more than this. And it is not as good. Too many of the sequins are sewn on the wrong way. It's just not good. I mean, I still have it. I still play with it. But I was so happy to find this for just a few dollars. In such good condition. Yeah, it's, it's smaller. But it's got nice sequins. And I just love the noise that these pillows make. I'm getting mesmerized by the viewing screen. <laughs> but like I said, I do have a web page loaded up of random facts that I can read to you from my tablet. Just wish I had a little stand for it to go right here. I unfortunately don't have a laptop. <clears throat> so it's going to be on my leg, which means that I'm going to be looking away from you, and I'm sorry. But I'm going to keep making lots of nice noises. I have a few different triggers here for you. So hopefully, you'll get your tingles going. <laughs> and we can celebrate this lovely Valentingles Day together. <laughs> Alright. So this article is from factretriever.com. And it is 61 lovely facts about Valentine's Day. In 2011, Iran banned Valentine's Day cards, gifts, teddy bears, and other Valentine tokens as a part of Islamic Republic backlash against the spread of Western culture. Additionally, some religious activists in India and Pakistan protest Valentine's Day as a shame, or sorry, as a day of shame, of lust. They view it as a Western holiday in which Westerners satisfy their sex thirst. Number two. On Valentine's Day 2000, the producer of Viagra, Pfizer, funded an Im Impotence Awareness Day in Britain. Mm, I can get down with that. On day three, or sorry, <laughs> uh, number three, Groundhog's Day was originally observed on February 14th. I didn't know that until today. Number four, the popular medieval folk belief that birds chose their mates on February 14th made doves a favorite symbol of Valentine's Day cards. The dove was sacred to Venus and other love deities and was known for choosing a lifelong mate. Number five. Valentine's Day was first introduced to Japan in 1936 and has become wildly popular. However, because of a translation error made by a chocolate company, only women buy Valentine's Day chocolates for their spouses, boyfriends, or friends. In fact, it is the only day of the year many single women will reveal their crush on a man by giving him chocolate. The men don't return the favor until White Day, a type of answer day to Valentine's Day, which is on March 14th. Shows you the difference between North America <laughs> and other countries. 
if you know about our March 14th. Nearly 10 new Candy Conversation Heart sayings are introduced each year. Recent additions have included, yeah right, puppy love, and call home. I'm just going to take a little bit of a tea break now in my adorable new mug that Stoner Rants got for me. Look at this cute little face. There we go. So cute. Ready to leave off. Number seven. <clears throat> Oh my goodness. Americans spend around 277 million on Valentine's cards every year, second only to Christmas. Approximately 8 billion Valentine's cards are sent each year around the world. An estimated 2.6 billion cards are sent during the Christmas holidays. Wow. My goodness. Number nine, on Valentine's Day, 2010, 39,897 people in Mexico City broke the record for the world's largest group kiss. That's cute. Number 10, started by a group of feminists, I hope you like this name, Quirky Alone Day is celebrated on February 14th as an alternative to Valentine's Day. It is geared towards people who resist the tyranny of coupledom. Another alternate Valentine's celebration is SAD, the Single Awareness Day, which reminds people that they don't need to be in a relationship to celebrate life. That's very true. <laughs> I'm going to switch to another object here. I also found at the dollar store some paper lantern. Let's get it up a little closer. Hopefully it'll focus in. There we go. With all these cute hearts all over it. But I just love the noise that it can make if I'm gentle with it. Adjust my hand. Alright, where did we leave off here? So number 11. The symbol of a ribbon which often adorns modern-day valentines, is rooted in the Middle Ages. When knights competed in tournaments, their sweethearts often gave them ribbons as good luck. I knew that. <laughs> lace is often used on valentine's decorations. The word lace comes from the Latin laquis? meaning to snare or net, as in to catch a person's heart. Thirteen, the ancient Roman festival, oops, got it on rotate, <laughs> the ancient Roman festival, I'm going to mispronounce this and I've heard it before too, Lupercalia, festival of the wolf, is considered to be one precursor to Valentine's Day, celebrated from February 13th to 15th, it was a purification and fertility ceremony, reminiscent of the modern exchange of love notes on Valentine's Day. Boys would draw a girl's name from a box on the eve of the festival and then escort her to the festival the next day. Or some scholars say she would be his sexual partner for the next year. Interesting. 14. During the ancient Roman festival, Lupercalia, mm, we're talking about this again, okay, an ancient precursor to Valentine's Day. Two boys would run through crowds of people, swinging strings made from goat skins. Ugh. <laughs> if the strings touched a girl, it was divined that she would have healthy children when she grew up. The, the goat skins were called febra, which means to make clean and from which February derives. Right, sorry about that, guys. My uh, timer ran out. Get this ball back here. It's a little bit dented. 
hard to look with uh, paper lanterns from the dollar store. It was so cute, I could not get it. Alright, so number 15. My goodness, we have a lot to go through. A true love knot, or endless knot of love, was a very popular valentine in England and the U.S. in the 17th century. As their name implies, <laughs> these valentines were drawn as a knot and could be read from any line and still make sense. Number 16. <clears throat> Valentine's Day is a $14.7 billion industry in the U.S. $14 billion? You guys. I might have put $10 in. I mean, granted, that's the U.S. I'm in Canada. Maybe a little better. <laughs> and then there's a quote here that says, Today is Valentine's Day. Or as men like to call it, Extortion Day, from Jay Leno. <laughs> Number 17. Some of the oldest handmade valentines are... Rebuses? Rebuses? I don't know. Which is Latin for things, or that which is indicated by things. A rebus? Re rebus? <laughs> is a kind of a puzzle or a riddle, and the pictures indicate the meaning of the card. For example, a picture of a bee and a picture of a gold mine would indicate the sentiment, be mine. Interesting. Small pieces of mirror were sometimes used on the more expansive and elaborate Valentine's Day cards produced during the golden ages of Valentine's, which was the 1830s to the 1850s. Mirror comes from the same Latin verb as admire, mirare, and that also means to wonder. 19. Pope Galatius established Valentine's Day in 500 AD in an attempt to appropriate appropriate the ancient pagan Roman fertility festival, Lupercalia, into Christianity. They did that a lot. <laughs> 20. There is no one except that there is no one accepted explanation for the connection between St. Valentine and love. Etymologists report that the letters V and G were once interchangeable in common speech. The war, the no, my goodness, I'm sorry, I'm tongue tied today. The Norman word galantin, meaning a lover of women, <laughs> was a at one bo time both written and pronounced valanta or valentin, from which valentine would have derived. Throughout history, sorry, this is number 21. Throughout history, there have been approximately eight Saint Valentines. Three of them had special feast days in their honor. The two St. Valentines who most likely inspired Valentine's Day are Valentine of Turney and Valentine of Rome, though some scholars speculate that they are actually one person. Number 22. On Valentine's Day, nearly 8 million stems of roses are... Or sorry, I read that wrong. On Valentine's Day, nearly 189 million stems of roses are sold in the U.S. i switch back to the pillow, but we will come back to that, and I do have another trigger after. Actually, to be fair, I forgot that I was wearing these necklaces, so I'll just fiddle with the necklaces while I read. I apologize, my heat has just come on. I'm not going to turn it down for this video, because it's too late now. <laughs> Alright, alright, so where are we leave off? Here we go, 23. Valentine's Day may have been named after Valentine of Turney, a priest who married Roman soldiers against orders from Claudius II. He was arrested and killed on February 14th in the year 269. 
It is said that an almond tree near his grave burst with pink flowers and all the birds chose mates, hence the term lovebirds. That's really sweet. I mean, not sweet that he died, but it's really sweet. Alright, I'm going to speak a little louder just in case the, the sound of the furnace is too much. So number 24. <clears throat> Valentine's Day may have been named after the priest Valentine of Rome, who refused to follow Claudius II's ban on Christianity. He, While he was imprisoned, children would pass him notes through the jail window. Before he was killed on February 14th, he wrote one last note to the jailer's daughter with whom he had fallen in love and signed it from your valentine oh, again goodness can people just stop being so mean to one another i know it's history but doesn't it feel like it never stops number 25 according to welsh tradition a child born on valentine's day would have many lovers a calf born on Valentine's Day, however, would be of no use for breeding purposes. If hens were to hatch eggs on Valentine's Day, they would all turn out rotten. Number 26. Famous people born on Valentine's Day include John Barrymore in 1882, Jimmy Hoffa in 1913, Jack Benny in 1894, Carl Bernstein in 1944, Renee Fleming in 1959, and Florence Henderson in 1934. Number 27. On Valentine's Day, James Cook was killed by natives in Hawaii in 1779. Oregon and Arizona were admitted to the Union in 1859 and 1912, respectively. James Polk became the first president photographed while in office in 1848. UPS was formed in 1919. The League of Women Voters was established in 1920. I think I knew that one. Aretha Franklin recorded respect in 1967. Did not know that. That's really interesting. Richard Nixon installed a secret taping system in the White House in 1971. The U.S. performed a nuclear test at the Nevada test site in 1976, and Voyager 1 took a picture of the entire solar system in 1990. Number 28 makes the most sense here. Teachers received the most Valentine's Day cards, followed by children, mothers, and wives. Children between the ages of 6 to 10 exchange more than 650 million Valentine's cards a year. Number 29. A kiss on Valentine's Day is considered to bring good luck all year. Well, I guess this would count. <laughs> good luck. Good luck for the rest of the year. <laughs> Number 30. The most popular flower on Valentine's Day is a single red rose, surrounded by baby's breath. The red rose was the flower of Venus, the Roman goddess of love. Number 31. The saying, wear your heart on your sleeve, is from the Middle Ages. Boys at this time would draw names of girls to see who would be their valentine, and then they would wear the, pinned, the name pinned on their sleeve for a week. That's cute. Number 32. Richard Cadbury produced the first box of chocolates for Valentine's Day in the late 1800s. Man. Ah, my goodness. <laughs> Number 33. Shakespeare mentions Valentine's Day in A Midsummer's Night Dream and in Hamlet. I think I noticed that. It's been a long time since I read Shakespeare, though. Number 34. Madame Royal, daughter of Henry IV of France, loved Valentine's Day so much that she named her palace the Valentine. Alright. Number 35. During the 1700s in England, a girl would pin four bay leaves to her pillow 
and eat a hard-boiled egg, including the shell, on the eve of St. Valentine's Day. I'm not, I'm not eating an egg in a shell. <laughs> Supposedly, if she dreamed of a boy that night, she would marry him soon. I also don't want to dream about a boy that I'm going to marry. <laughs> it's a little late for that. <laughs> Girls would also write boys' names on small pieces of paper, cover them with clay, and drop them into the water. When the clay broke, the papers floated to the top. The first name the girls would read would predict whom they would marry. I love old, like, um, not wives' tales, but like old traditions like that, old, um, folklore type stuff. I love that. It's so fascinating to me. Number 36. British children in the 18th and 19th centuries would celebrate Valentine's Day by going door to door, singing songs, and sometimes begging for cake or money. Alright. Number 37. Both garters and gloves are traditionally popular Valentine's tokens. The word garter comes from the old French word garette, meaning bend in the knee. And glove is derived from the old English word glove, <laughs> meaning palm of the hand, spelled G-L-O-F. <laughs> Number 38. On Valentine's Day, many people buy flowers. Different colored roses have different meanings. Red means love, yellow means friendship, and pink means friendship or sweetheart. Red carnations mean admiration. White carnations mean pure love. Red chrysanthemums, sorry, mean love. And forget-me-nots forget mean true love. Primrose means young love. And larkspur means an open heart. Number 39. The condom company directs reports that condom sales are 20 to 30% higher around Valentine's Day. Number 40. Traditionally, young girls in the U.S. and the U.K. believed they could tell what type of man they would marry, depending on the type of bird they first saw on Valentine's Day. That's interesting. If they saw a blackbird, they would marry a clergyman. A robin red breast indicated a sailor, and a goldfinch indicated a rich man. <laughs> Sorry. Tea break. <laughs> A sparrow meant they would marry a farmer, a bluebird indicated a happy man, and a crossbill meant an argumentative man. Well, then I would have wanted a bluebird. If they saw a dove, they would marry a good man, but seeing a woodpecker meant they would not marry at all. The first recorded valentine, sorry, this is number 41 now, the first recorded valentine was sent February in 1415 by the English Duke of Orleans, he sent a love letter to his wife from his jail cell in the Tower of London after the Battle of Agincourt. It is currently on display in the British Museum. Interesting. Number 42. Commercially, Valentine's cards didn't appear in England until almost the 1800s though handmade cards had been popular for some time. Number 43. In 1653, English puritanical leader Oliver Cromwell became Lord Protector of the Realm and subsequently banned St. Valentine's Day customs. Valentine's Day wasn't observed again until Stuart King Charles II was restored to the English throne in 1660. Seven years. Seven years without any Valentine stuff. At least publicly. In 2010, 25% of adults bought flowers or plants as a Valentine's Day gift. Of these, 60% were men and 40% were women. Men mainly bought flowers for romantic reasons, while women bought flowers for their mothers and friends as well as their sweethearts. Number 45. 
The first American Valentine was produced in 1834 by New York engraver Robert Elton. Number 46. In 1969, St. Valentine's Day was removed from the Roman calendar. Sorry, I had a YouTube pop-up. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it was St. Valentine's Day was removed from the Roman calendar of saints by Pope Paul the sixth through its religious observance oh though its religious observance is still allowed number 47 in 2005 a u.s man was charged with using an internet chat room to organize a mass suicide on valentine's day some of these are depressing i didn't mean to depress anyone number 48 the first European post boxes appeared in Paris in the late 18th century, which revolutionized the way Valentine's Day cards were produced and delivered. Each year, 300,000 letters go through Loveland, Colorado, to get a special heart stamp cancellation for Valentine's Day. I'm not sure what that means. It kind of makes me want to look it up after. Each year, 300,000 letters go through Loveland, Colorado to get a special heart stamp cancellation for Valentine's Day. It's the cancellation that's really confusing me. I'll have to look that up. Number 50. There is a town in Texas called Valentine, but not for a romantic reason. The first train to arrive there happened to do so on February 14th. That's interesting. Number 51. To abolish the pagan custom of Valentine lottery, in which boys would draw the names of girls and then pay special attention to them during the holiday, Christian leaders urged boys to substitute saints' names on the tickets. This may have led to the later 19th century habit of calling them Valentines after one of the prominent martyred saints. The move was not very popular and did not last long. I wouldn't think so. How are you going to get boys to stop chasing girls? It's kind of been happening for a long time. <laughs> Even before that. Alright. In Germany, so number 52. In Germany, girls would plant onions in a pot on Valentine's Day. And next to the onions, they placed the name of a boy. They believed they would marry the boy whose name was nearest to the first grown onion. That's a fun one. Number 53. Esther Howland, who lived from or sorry, 1828 to 1904, was the first person to create Valentines to sell in the United States. Yeah, woman power. She patented a lacy Valentine in 1844. And by 1860, her factory was selling thousands of valentines, earning over $100,000. I'm wondering if that's 100000 those days? <laughs> Number 54. St. Valentine is the patron saint of lover and engaged couples. He is also the patron saint of epilepsy, which he is said to have suffered from, plague, greeting, Travelers, young people, and beekeepers. I like it. Number 55. Valentine candy, conversation hearts, have a shelf life of five years. So, if you still have some from last year, or if you find them next year, don't throw them out. They're still good if you're going to eat them. Oh, and there's a little sub, sub part to that too. Every year, about 10 to 14 million pounds of sweethearts are produced, which is about 4.8 billion to 6.7 billion individual hearts. That's a lot of sugar. A common symbol of Valentine's Day is Cupid. Sorry, number 56. A common symbol of Valentine's Day is Cupid, desire, the Roman god of love. The son of Venus and Mars, he was originally depicted as a young man who would sharpen his arrows on a grindstone wetted with blood from an infant. 
though now he is completely or commonly presented as a pudgy baby. This transformation occurred during the Victorian era when new business owners wanted to promote Valentine's Day as a more suitable for women and children. Oh my goodness. There's some gory backstories in our history, isn't it? Alright, sorry. Just had to uh, restart the recording there. Get my hair out from the way. Alright, number 57. Over 100 years ago, the Chicago Post Office refused to deliver about 25,000 Valentine's postcards because their messages were not nice. The caustic cards were called Vinegar Valentines. Number 58. Red hearts. <laughs> red hearts are a ubiquitous Valentine symbol. Red hearts traditionally associated with the color of blood. At one time, people thought that the heart, which pumps blood, was the part of the body that felt love. In fact, when the Egyptians mummified their dead for burial, they removed every organ but the heart because they believed the heart was the only part of the body necessary for the trip through eternity. I didn't know that. That's really cool. 59. The first recorded association of Valentine's Day with romantic love occurs in Chaucer's Parliament of Fowls? Fools? I'm not sure. Chaucer writes in modern translation, For this was on St. Valentine's Day, when every bird comes there to choose his mate. However, Chaucer may have been referring to Valentine of Genoa, whose saint day was May 2nd, a more likely time for birds to be mating than February 14th. Number 60. The High Court of Love was established in Paris, France in 1400 and is the first known official celebration of St. Valentine's Day. Composed of 30 women, it dealt with love contracts, violence against women, and betrayals. I think we're still dealing with some of that stuff, aren't we? <sighs> not depressing, not depressing. This is a happy day. 61. Valentine writers were booklets written in 1823 by Peter Quizumo to help those who couldn't think up Valentine's verses on their own. That's Stoner Rance. She's upstairs, forgetting that she needs to be quiet because she's watching something. Alright, so that was our 61 interesting facts about Valentine's Day. And I know some of them were dark, but when you've got something that has gone for so long, it's going to have some dark history to it, right? Here. We just spend a little time with some noises. I actually have a sort of little snack here. That I thought we could enjoy. I made, so I can be a little sticky, I made some little ice cubes, but they're made with tea. just make a big mess apparently. They're getting a little melty. It's probably because the heat came on. I tried to keep them as cool as I could. Get one more at least. I'll do a few more. It's a couple stuck together. A couple of hearts stuck together. I'm making a big mess.
the tea was really strong when I made it. I'm just gonna grab the napkin. Sorry guys, I thought that that would work out a little better. When it's warmer weather, I will certainly do an ice cube munching video if anyone wants. Then it won't be so cold for me. Again, I do live in Camden, right? And it is the middle of February. But yes, let's just spend a little time letting you just kind of drift off and relax. a little out of reach. gold pillow. Doesn't always have to be for Valentine's Day.
single, or you spend it with friends, or your lover, or whether you don't celebrate it at all. <laughs> Even if you don't celebrate it, I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a wonderful night. And here's an extra.